join me as we harvest a couple of pieces from this old broken DVD player. So what we have is connector panel, DVD mechanism, power supply and at the front here a little um, uh, subboard for controls. So let's um, strip it out. this um, power supply for future use because it's got plus 5 volts, ground minus 12 and plus 12 volts. Um, won't be a lot of power, 100 milliamps probably, 200 milliamps, but there's a, a very, it's already connected, ready, uh, simple little power supply. So that's, that's worth keeping. Next up, let's. Um, there are two bits in here in the mechanism that I want to um, get at, and then I'll explain why when I get there. Okay, uh, little tilt mechanism. We don't need any of this, there's just two pieces in here that I'm after. So let's get the actual reading mechanism out. If ever you do this, don't try and run the machine with the lid off and the top off because there's laser uh, light coming out of uh, this little mechanism here and uh, a friend of mine actually burnt his eye. So uh, you've got to be careful. He happened to get right over the top of it top of one when it was running. That was a professional version, but it uh, doesn't matter, you can hurt yourself or whatever. There we go. Right, that is rubbish. I don't need any of that. I just want these two bars. Right, this is the um, scanning mech out of a DVD and um, the, the actual laser head can move backwards and forwards and up and down so it can, um, it can track a, a wobbly disc this way and a wobbly disc that, that uh, as it moves up and down in the platter, you know, a uh, slightly warped disc, uh, it can actually track it. So it's quite a clever bit of kit, um, don't need that. But I'm after these two bars and uh, I'll just, there you go, this is the, this is the course mechanism for the uh, scanning the, your disc sits on here and rotates like this and um, th this scans across but it only does course, the fine adjustment is done with the little electromagnets in there, clever. Very clever bit here. Anyway, let me just whip the uh, bars out, if I can. Oh, I have to get a different screwy drive. That is the piece I'm after. A ground steel shaft. Right, all of this is scrap. But these two bars are very useful. I'll show you why. Right, here we go. This is a 
kinematic touch probe that uh, I built a few years ago. It's a bit of an unmitigated disaster, uh, which is why it's gone rusty, because it's been left in a cupboard. Anyway, uh, I'll open it up so you can see. This is um, a few years old now, and um, it was, theory. in theory it was a good idea, but I hadn't thought through the the full implications of the design before I decided to just get out and make it. So um, I'll show you what the problem is with it and why those bars are useful. Right, before I take the next thing out, next two out, it's only got that much movement before it jams and my little mill uh, occasionally doesn't register the movement quickly enough so it basically hits the limit of travel on this before the mill stops so uh, the net result is it bends its probe so all in all a bit of a disaster um, it was reasonably accurate and quite repeatable um, but the the other problem with it is hmm, one's a bit manky come on how'd you come hello my little furry friends arrived her who must be first Okay, where were we before the pussycat interrupted? Let's uh, take this out. Oh, I know, Fluff, I know. Right. <laughs> Cat, leave me alone. Right, this is the this is the crux of it. There are, I'll see if I can find a picture of how these things work. Um, and th this is, leave the camera alone, you bad cat. Come here. Here we go. This is the crux of it. Each of these little bars sits with two ball bearings over a um, a. a piece of circuit board in this case so let me put that back here we go all bearings sit in the holes like so and I'll tell you what I'll put them all in if I've got all of them still there we are right so the circuit is arranged so that each each ball, each long leg is connected together, but there's, there's a gap between the there's a gap between this uh, ball and that ball. Whoops. So the bar sits across the two and makes the connection. So when um, let me see if I can get this back in here. There we go. I don't know if you can see that well, but as the if the probe moves, it breaks one of the contacts. So once it well, it's all uh, in its normal position, pushed down by a spring, such like it um, it provides continuity. So uh, it's a short short circuit to the case. Uh, there's only one wire needed. Uh, short circuit to the case. If it touches something, it breaks one of those connections and uh, goes open circuit. 
and uh, and that's mapped to the to an input on the mill that uh, gives you um, uh, a, a touch, if you like, on the probe. So it's a it was a good idea. Uh, it wasn't well made, as you can see. It's crap, to be perfectly honest. Uh, but it did prove that I could make one, and I could make one accurate enough for the sort of thing that I do. So there we go. It all fits in the in there. And uh, the end case has got some little, I think they're M2 screws that uh, fit in these these holes, and that gives me a means of there we go aligning it. So you can um, put it in the put it in the lathe or the mill, and uh, tweak these three until you get the tip to run absolutely concentrically. So let me just put this back together. Not quite got that right, but then mine doesn't matter, I don't use it. Um, I want to make another one eventually. Uh, I have some thoughts on designs, but in the meantime, whenever I come across a scrap DVD I or a CD player, I take out the stainless ground bars. Are they stainless? Don't know. Probably not, they're probably magnetic. Yeah, magnetic, so they're not stainless. But whatever they're made from, they don't rust, which is extremely useful for this sort of application. So um, yeah, I save them, and uh, they cut quite nicely with a with a Dremel cut-off saw. And uh, I yeah, as I said, I'm going to make a make a new one of these at some point. But I'm going to design it so it's got more travel. Um, also, I've um, I have been fiddling for a while and I've got um, uh, I've written some Arduino code so I'm going to put a little Arduino in the in the body uh, it'd have to be a much bigger body um, and use the uh, the uh, Arduino's ability to send infrared codes so you, you can um, send an infrared code to say you've just touched something you could uh, you can also send a code if you over travel and you trip another switch so if it moves too far, then you can um, send another emergency code, which should, which you can map to the mill to stop it completely. So uh, you know, hit hit the um, the safety stop. So that's where we are with that. I've written the code. I've got that working. Uh, I just haven't. I've been so tied up with work. I haven't actually got any further with designing a new one. Um, but that's why. I harvest these. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you again next time. Sorry if this is a bit out of focus, by the way. I'm working with limited resources here.